Welcome to Markets Now. I'm Michelle Ruck along with Oliver Slope Blue Line Futures, a higher day in livestock, kind of mixed in the grains. And Oliver, let's start off talking about the grains. We've seen kind of this meltdown in the grain sector to start off this holiday week. And, you know, what are you thinking? We came off the lows today. Are we getting close to lows, you think? Well, I think uh, the recovery in today's session was uh, very constructive for corn and soybeans. I guess you could throw wheat in the mix as well. The chart that really looks the most constructive, though, is that July corn market. We were able to get back uh, you know, closer towards that psychologically significant $6 handle. And the retracement, I think, was healthy, right? We pulled back yesterday and again on Tuesday, and that pullback basically took us to the 50% retracement or basically the middle of the range from last week's five-day rally. Remember, we had five consecutive days of gains last week. So, of course, pullbacks are welcome there. Now, the soybean market, they've got a little bit more work to be done there. Uh, we've had quite a sharp sell-off there, and I think a lot of that has been on the back of some weak Chinese uh, economic data, data. Their PMI numbers came in softer than expected, a five-month low at 488 Low 50, you're looking at a contraction, so not good news there. And it wasn't just the grain markets that got hit on the back of that news. You saw it in the energy complex, as well as a number of other commodities as well. Yeah, certainly money flow was part of the story here, but we were also removing some weather premium looking out at those extended forecasts, weren't we? Yeah, I think that's absolutely right. And I think part of last week's rally, talking about that big corn rally we had 49 cents in July last week, I think a lot of that was in anticipation of a long weekend where you really don't have that certainty around weather. And what we do know is that the I states, we're talking about Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, all being very dry, and that helped prop up the market. Uh, but there are some rains potentially showing up in the back half of June. That's still a ways out, though. A couple of weeks is tough to predict. Heck, it's tough to predict what's going to happen in the next couple of days. So weather is going to be a, a, a big, big factor going forward for price action. I expect that volatility to continue. And that's right in line with what we seasonally see. So not a big surprise there. So you've got macroeconomics, you've got weather, but we also have demand concerns in sectors of the grain market, too, don't we? We have just had dismal demand for the corn market. And I think that's probably why we sold off so hard at the beginning of May, uh, specifically in that corn market. We got the cancellations, uh, just really poor weekly export data week after week after week. And then on top of that, we got an extension of the Black Sea grain deal. So there was a lot of bad news thrown at the market. But I think during that downtrend uh, earlier in the month of May, I think a lot of the, uh, that had been digested by the market. Now we can move forward and start to process what we're looking at for this year's crop. And again, it all is going to go back uh, to the weather and what that's going to be like in the Midwest, particularly those ice states, which have been very dry as of late. But this has been technical selling. The funds are short in Chicago wheat. They're short in corn, maybe short in soybeans now. If they are, do they keep pushing that side of the market? Yeah, and soybeans, that's the one that's really drawn a little bit of a caution flag for me. They've been short corn, about 100,000 contracts. They've been short wheat, uh, one of their largest net short positions in the last 10 years for soybeans. The last commitment of traders report had them holding a net long position of about 4,000 contracts. So they haven't gone short there yet, or at least in that report. I assume they are now, right? But you know, going back to 2015 to 2020, you know, funds were short about 100 thousand contracts plus or minus soybeans each year. So they have room to add if the fundamentals don't firm up for soybeans. So soybeans, I'm certainly a little bit more cautious of here in the near term. Yeah. I want to go back on one thing we talked about, demand being a concern, but yet you still have that inverted market in corn and soybeans. And does that continue? And what's the story there? Yeah, I, I think that's going to continue to be a big catalyst going forward. I'm hopeful that low prices can cure low prices. So at some point, you know, that will happen. But at what point is that? That's going to be the big question. And again, my, my concern is for soybeans that that is going to be lower, especially if the weather does pan out here in the United States through the growing season and we do produce a good crop. Uh, we're, we're really going to need demand to pick up the bulk of the load as far as the charts and the price action goes. And cattle today, boy, we saw a little bit of early profit taking because I guess it's end of the month here. So you might expect that. But man, we roared back into contract highs here. Is there anything that maybe would get the funds to get out of some of this massive long position they're in? 
Well, eight consecutive uh, months of gains, 11 out of the last 12 months have been up. So the trend and the path of least resistance has been higher. But you're right, the funds do have a very large net long position in the live cattle market, 102,000 contracts and broken down. It's about 118,000 longs versus 16,000 short. So it's definitely loaded to one side of the boat. And again, my concern is that if we do get the fundamental backdrop to soften up a little bit, there could be a rush for the exit, and that's a narrow exit in the cattle market. Um, looking at the volatility in the cattle complex, the CME Seval Index, which measures volatility, at 11.3. That's relatively low. For those that are looking to manage risk, that means options are relatively cheap. So there's ways to protect the downside from these levels while still remaining bullish, and I think that's something certainly uh, Hedger should take a look at going forward into a new month of trade. Yeah, and Oliver, we got a push here because of higher cash, obviously lower corn too, but higher cash trade. Do you think we build on that this week because we're getting into tighter numbers and feedlots look like they have the leverage? Well, again, I, I do think that the cash market will probably continue to firm up. How much more is going to be the big question? How much is it baked into the cake with regards to the funds? If that shows any signs of softening up, that's where the risk is. So although we may be able to continue to grind higher, I think the, the higher velocity move or where the risk is, is to the downside with the way that the funds are positioned uh, for the funds to really want to add significantly more from these levels. You're going to have to see a big move in cash. I don't know if there's another big move in the cash market coming around the corner. And speaking of the funds, uh, near record short in hogs. We had a limit up day yesterday. We were at least able to add on to it today. Was it end of the month short covering? Is that all? I think that was certainly part of it. Uh, big net short position in the lean hogs, 24,000 contracts. Doesn't sound like a lot, but it is historically. I think it, uh, looking back at it, I think it was the largest net short position. So a new record on that front. And you're seeing some short covering to round out the month. And I wouldn't be surprised to see that continue into a new month of trade. I think the fundamentals have probably been baked into the cake a little bit. Uh, we've seen the cash market stabilize a little bit. So I'm still optimistic on hogs. My optimism has not been in the front month contract. So my optimism has been out in that December contract, which has been at a discount. So I, I like playing that for a longer term trade, but it has not been an easy one. It's been a thorn in the side coming into this week. That's for sure. All right. Thanks so much for joining us, Oliver. Slope Blue Line Futures. That is Markets Now.